can't touch this. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America. Thank you very much. Hard to put how unusual this was uh, from the Speaker of the House ending by uh, pointedly ripping up the text of the speech. So now, Rebecca in La Mesa, California, what did you think of the president's speech and or the Democratic response? Hi there. Good evening. Uh, actually, I thought it was really funny that you just said that the New York Times described it as being a reality show as I thought the same thing. Um, I thought it was great that I don't remember her name, but the that military service man was able to, uh, you know, return to his family. That was a surprise, but that I honestly thought what was going to be next might be someone who's going to get a rose as well. But overall, it was very campaign-y. Um, you know, I kind of thought it was a whole lot of just schmaltz and, you know, uh, self aggrandulation All right. Anything in there that you agreed with? Um, I suppose I like Juan, uh, Juan Guaido, uh, the, the uh, statement that we that he made in regards to Venezuela and overall trying to be in solidarity with them. Um, but even having Juan Guaido there as well was a little um, show-offy, a little bit, a little showboat. And in fact, uh, prior to the uh, speech, it had said that the former police chief of Caracas was going to be there, and it turned out to be uh, Mr. Guaido. Randy, Oklahoma City. Hi, what'd you think? I loved it. It um, Our president is a good president, and he's doing a lot of good things. But what is we, one of those we need things? a bipartisan um, house, and the actions of the Democrats just sitting there and Nancy Pelosi tearing up the manuscript was appalling. Washington Post, this is their immediate reaction to it. Trump touts jobs, immigration policies, and foreign relations. Charles in Anniston, Alabama, what's your reaction? Well, i put it this way. I've been a Democrat for 70-something years. And what I've seen tonight was appalling to me and the gentleman before you. I think it was very disrespectful for this president. I didn't vote for him, and I sometimes I don't agree with his policies. But that man is the president, and we should respect him. And what I've seen tonight of the Democrat Party, I am changing my mind. I mean, I'll probably still be a Democrat. But far as I'm electing for a goddamn Democrat, never again. I'll probably stay home, and I, I am very embarrassed being a goddamn Democrat for what they did in the house over there today with Pelosi and the rest of them, sitting like a bunch of daggum damn idiots sitting there. And that is that is my thing about what I think about it. Now, the 17,000 families in this country of our family name, that we all probably get together again, and we probably will boycott the Democrat Party. And that's what I have to say about it. And I want you to know exactly how I feel. Thank you, and I'll fix a hang up on you. Bye. Trent is in Monroe, Louisiana. Hi, Trent. Hey, just to give a philosophical thought to all this, I think the major media has tried to make Donald Trump out to be a shallow entertainer, and those of us out here who love him as uneducated lovers of shallow entertainment. But I think the reality is that there are deep things in Donald Trump that he can't even quite express that are deep, deep things in the masses of people out here that he's connected with. And um, I think what we've got going on here is a little reversal of the Bob Dylan song in the 60s. Is um, There's something going on here, and you don't know what it is, do you, Mr. Liberal? So, I mean, Trent, what is that, what you call deep, deep connection to you? What do you where do you connect with him? I think there's a wrestling for an understanding that uh, the Christian nation that we are has got tons of truth that the media and the cable networks and even C-SPAN won't allow us to talk about. And with that gap, that's where the the, the real – there's just a thin – gap between us getting to say what we really believe and a paradigm shift happening in this country. And then for the ruling class and the managerial elite, brother, the party is over. 
for those who control the truth narrative. Darla in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. What'd you think of Nancy Pelosi tearing up the speech at the end? Darla, you with us? Yes, I'm still here, and I thought it was disgusting. Um, as I sat here tonight and watched the whole speech, it was odd just to watch the State of the Union address and watch my president give the speech on everything great that's happening in our country, but yet Nancy Pelosi and the others who were dressed in white, I might add, just sitting over there, never standing, never clapping for anything that might be good for the country. I don't understand it. I used to be a Democrat, but I am no longer a Democrat. I will. Oops, I am so sorry I cut you off. Kathleen in Placerville, California, good evening to you. What's your reaction to the speech? I agree wholeheartedly with the other callers. I am a Democrat as well, but no longer will I vote Democrat. I think it's outrageous that they sat there when all these good things are happening to our country and how much we love our country, and they looked like they hated our country. And Nancy Pelosi, the whole time she's sitting up there with a disgusting look on her face, it's outrageous. I will never vote Democrat again, and I'm sick of it, and my whole family feels the same way. My husband, my friends are sitting here, all former Democrats. We all voted for Hillary last time, and therefore never, ever will we ever vote Democrat again. Now, um, Kathleen, this is not the first time that half the House essentially hasn't has sat on their hands during a presidential speech. This happened during President Obama, President Bush, President Clinton. What makes this year different? I, I, when I see them sitting out there and their protest against the president, but it's not just a protest against the president. It's a protest against everything good that this country was founded on and how much we love our country. And, you know, it's always portrayed that the Democrats don't love their country. Well, we love our country and we want to see it succeed. But it appears to us that our, our Democratic Party has been stolen from us by a bunch of communists and no longer will our family ever vote Democrat again. Wall Street Journal headline, Trump avoided impeachment in speech. He spoke for about an hour, 15 minutes, and then was interrupted by applause on top of that. Joy Kelso Washington, hi. Hi, how are you? Joy, what's your reaction to the president's speech? I am literally disgusted with Pelosi and the Democrats' behavior, the way she teared up his speech behind him at the end. I was a registered Democrat. I have gone independent. I'm leaning GOP now. Um, I love Trump's policies. He's making our country and the world better. Um, our, our children are our future, and it's time to take back our families and keep the government out of our families. And that is what Trump is doing. Joy, and did I you get the did you get the feeling? that both he and Governor Whitmer were speaking to their respective bases? Or did you get a feeling that uh, both were reaching across the aisle? He, Trump was speaking to everyone. He always does. He might not be all the best person to speak. And he takes, you know, a lot of his tweets sometimes too far. But this is a man that is trying to Keep our country our country and not give it away. Kai, New Orleans. Good evening. Hi. Uh, I'm, I'm a registered Republican. I, am, I want to touch base on one thing. I can't understand where the Democrats um, didn't stand or didn't applaud when the president did speak because we did the same thing with Obama. But um, I just want to say I am a minority. I just want to say that. Everyone makes the president out to be a racist, and I don't think he's a racist, but I want to let a lot of people know that there are groups like us, a minority that support President Trump. You know, you can go to our Twitter page. Uh, we help raise money to go out to better ground space, and we are trying to help the president, you know, make America greater than ever before. So there are minorities who do support the president, who do appreciate the America First policy, instead of helping minority with better job offers and stuff like that. I'm, I'm a doctor. I was able to hire more 
people out of you know out of college, give them a better um, pay rate under this administration. And now, like I say, we are you know we started a group, a grassroots um, group that's going out to you know to show the America that the minority does support President Trump. Hi, and what's I, your what's your Twitter page? What's it called? It's minor- minorities that support President Trump. Can you name one policy that you support? Uh, I support his um, his tax cuts that, uh, and his um, small business policy that allow you know us to be able to you know get tax cuts to hire more people and you know a lot of people making it seem like oh the uh, stock market you know is doing great but it don't affect every day but when you have high corporations who are able to pass on the savings yes I do support the president his policies his tax cuts and also his own small businesses on policies. As a as a doctor, what's your position on Medicare for all? Um, I I think it would bankrupt our country. There's no way way to really pay for Medicare for all. But um, I do support you know everyone chipping in and um, helping out. And what kind of medicine do you practice? Orthopedic. Thank you, sir. Dalton, Daphne, Alabama. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Dalton from Alabama, um, and I just wanted to say I enjoyed his speech. Um, I am legally blind and uh, brain damage, and I enjoyed where he was talking about uh, the adults, or where he was talking about people with disabilities that have jobs. I have a job myself, um, and I wish more. Um, people in the uh, government would at least acknowledge people with disabilities. The length of the speech, one hour, 18 minutes and seven seconds. If you go to C-SPAN's Twitter feed, you'll find some analysis on there. Next up is John in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Hi, John. Good evening. I listened to the State of the Union and the Democratic response. They were both, in my opinion, a little bit of kabuki theater, pandering to the base. But as a libertarian, I was greatly amused by the opening example from the Democrat response where the young man in Michigan was filling potholes because the government wasn't doing it. And the governor was implying that it's the job of the federal government to uh, fix roads. It's not the job of the federal government. And the Democrats are pushing for more of a centralized, top-down administration where it's been proven time and time again, the bigger that an organization gets, the less responsive it is to the needs of the people get back to we need to get back to the uh, local issues handled by local governments state issues by state governments and the federal government making sure that the states treat each other fairly and they deal with the foreign governments thank you sir washington times their headline trump tells americans he stopped downsizing of America's destiny in the State of the Union. And from Twitter, Mike Bloomberg, Trump's wall won't fix our broken immigration system, especially when the sections that Trump has managed to build are falling down. Americans don't want it, but Trump's ego demands it. Mike is calling in from Pennsylvania. Mike, what's your reaction to the speech or to Governor Whitmer's response? I will say that with a simple rip of a paper, Nancy Pelosi has pretty much sealed the deal of a re-election of Donald Trump. When independent voters see that, watch the rest of the speech, the optics of her being so childish to rip the speech after the ending of the speech, right after the soldier is brought reunited with his family from afghanistan the optics of that are so horrible so childish it definitely plays to the base of the 
TDS, Trump derangement syndrome crowd. But when you have independent voters that listen to the end of that speech, see that whole segment and her ripping pages, she she has you have lost any independent voter that has been looking. Do, do I go with the person that's there or do I take a chance on an unknown of the Democratic Party? That Mike, alone- Mike um, Nancy Pelosi has been around for a while and pretty experienced politician. Uh, what, what do you think her motive was? I think her motive is to play to her base that is... The base is already in. They are going to vote against Trump no matter what. You need to win the independent voters. Anyone who is on the fence, you take a look at that. That that is so embarrassing that she would do that. 